Hi everyone, welcome back to Lecture 7D of Useful Genetics, where we're going to dive into meiosis. Um, in many genetics courses, students find meiosis the most difficult process, but I think here you'll find it really quite fulfilling because you're actually going to understand not just what happens, but why it happens and how it happens. So we're going to frame this by thinking about what are the specific problems that meiosis has to solve, problems that are different than what mitosis has to do. Um, meiosis is two divisions, but we'll focus almost entirely on the first division because the second division is basically identical to mitosis. And the first problem that meiosis has is going to be solved by bringing the homologous chromosomes together so they can be treated as pairs in the same way that mitosis treats the sister chromatids. So this is just a reminder of what meiosis and mating accomplish, and in particular that what meiosis does is it takes a diploid cell and produces haploid cells with new combinations of alleles, but still complete sets of genetic information. So the genetic problem that meiosis evolved to solve is making haploid gametes from a diploid cell. And just as my mitosis does, it has to make sure that those gametes get a complete set of chromosomes. Not the same as the parental set, though. They're a haploid set rather than the two sets that were in the parent cell. This creates three new problems that meiosis has to solve. The first, ensuring it each haploid cell gets one complete set, not incomplete sets, not too few chromosomes or too many. Making each haploid set a mixture, randomized mixture of the diploid cells two sets, and shuffling alleles that are on homologous chromosomes. Now the first problem is solved by pairing the homologs. So in a way, meiosis uses the same strategy mitosis did, but it has to do something special first. The second problem is solved by the random way in which the kinetochores point in the cell so that you can't predict which chromosome is going to get pulled to which pole of the cell. And the third problem is solved by a process called crossing over that we'll talk about in lecture seven, it might be G or it might be H. Now here's mitosis that we've already talked about, and here's meiosis. And as you can see, the drawings are very similar, but meiosis has two cell divisions. This is meiosis one, this is meiosis two. The starting, in this drawing, the starting cell for the process of meiosis is the same as the starting cell for the process of mitosis. It's a diploid cell that's already replicated its chromosomes. And as in the mitotic cell, the sister chromatids are still together. But meiosis I does something different. Instead of putting one sister chromatid into the daughter cell, it puts one pair of sister chromatids from each homologue into the daughter cell. Meiosis II then takes these daughter cells with their still paired sister chromatids and splits the sister chromatids just like mitosis does. So for us, meiosis I is the process where all the interesting new things happen, and meiosis II is basically just like mitosis. So as I said, Meiosis has three new problems to solve, and in this lecture we're going to talk about the first problem, which is ensuring that each haploid cell, here the two haploid cells have two sister chromatids, or here where they each have one sister chromatid, ensuring that each haploid cell gets one complete set of chromosomes. And you might be wondering, well, why can't meiosis do what mitosis did? It works for mitosis. Um, what if it just, mitosis keeps the sister chromatids together until it's time to divide the cell? And that works great. But that won't work as described for meiosis because what meiosis one needs to separate isn't 
sister chromatids, it's homologous chromosomes. So this set of homologous chromosomes goes into one cell of homologous chromatids. This, the other homologous chromosome, they're the same length, the same shape, goes into the other cell. It's not separating sister chromatids. They're staying together. The problem is that these homologous chromosomes have never been together. Never ever in the history of the universe have these homologous chromosomes, the dark blue one and the light blue one, ever been together. So what does meiosis one do? It puts them together. And then it can do what mitosis does. So it creates a higher level pair of the two homologous chromosomes, chromosomes with different versions of the same genetic information. And then it treats that pair in the same way that mitosis treats a pair of sister chromatids. So here's our drawing of meiosis. What I'm doing now is introducing a new step. And the new step takes these homologous chromosomes, these two long ones and these two short ones, and it brings them together even though they've never been together before. So now the two homologous chromosomes are paired up, linked together in the cell before meiosis, before the division. Then this division can line up the pairs of homologous chromosomes and pull the pairs apart into different daughter cells. And you'll see how that work, this works in upcoming slides. So here's the strategy. After DNA replication, the first step, keep the sister chromatids together, just like mitosis did. So there's a pair of sister chromatids kept together. And then bring the homologs together. So bring the dark blue chromosomes and the light blue, dark blue chromatids and the light blue chromatids together and lock them together side by side along their length. Then the cell can attach spindle fibers to the kinetochores and pull the homologs apart. You notice that at this step, the two sister chromatids just have one kinetochore. They don't have two kinetochores yet. And this makes the pulling apart simple because the spindle fibers can again use the same strategy of attaching to a kinetochore, checking to see if there's tension, if something's pulling back in the other direction, and hang on if there's tension, let go if there's no tension, because that means that you haven't got the spindle fibers attached correctly. And then the spindle fibers pull the homologs apart keeping the pairs of sister chromatids together. So, given what I've just said, what's wrong with this drawing of chromosomes in meiosis 1? And the answer is that the sister chromatids should be together, but they're not. So the two dad sister chromatids should be together with one kinetochore, and the two mum sister chromatids should be together with one kinetochore. And that's true for all of the drawings in this picture. So what we've done, we've talked about how meiosis adopts the same strategy and tools that were used by mitosis. The homologs weren't together, but it brings them together and locks them together in the same way that the sister chromatids are locked together in mitosis. And then the spindle fibers attach to the pair of homologs using the same kind of tug of war, pulling the homologs to the center of the cell, and then pulling the homologs apart so that each daughter cell gets one version of each homologous chromosome. And meiosis two steps separate the sister chromatids in exactly the same way that mitosis separates the sister chromatids. Coming up next, we're going to think about well, how does this play out in males and in females because it's different. Hope to see you there.